from the studios of Staten Island Community Television, you're watching In the Bleachers, the TV show for the world's most passionate sports fans. Hello, everyone. I'm Jamie Hickson, joined by my dear friend over the phone. The man of the hour with the power of the hardest by the sexiest man on cable access TV. Yours truly, Hector Bosa. When are you going to start introducing me like that? That I'm would not. be better. I'm tired of saying that you should say it. No. But anyway, you know, I feel bad for the Mets. I You're really want them to be in first place. What's going on? What's going on? They can't hit with runners in scoring position. Uh, the, the pitching has been betrayed by the batting order. And the bullpen, for the most part, has been very, very shaky. That's a shame because whatever magic they had seems like it's gone because everything went well for them, even though they had so many things go wrong for them. Mm-hmm. especially losing players. So, what's it going to take? What's it going to take? They just need to start scoring some runs. It's plain and simple. Because they didn't sign no big free agent. More like they weren't able to. Why? Because of salary cap? You know there's no salary cap in baseball, right? There, no, 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 there's a luxury tax. There's a luxury tax, that's which right. Which is supposed to be the same as almost a cap, cap, uh, a, a cap. So, mm. but, um, why couldn't they find anybody? They did get someone, though. Mm-hmm. Who'd they get? You mean at the trade deadline? Yes. They wound up getting, um, let's check it over here. I'm looking at the roster right now. All right. So while you're doing that. Javier Baez. Oh, is that a good pickup? Yeah, it's a very good pickup. Javier, Javier Baez is a great defensive shortstop. And also a, a pretty good power hitter. And isn't he also a friend who, uh, with the other uh, Lindell? Friends with who? Lindor. Francisco Lindor? Yeah. He plays the same position, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. And that guy there that you just mentioned, he calms Lindor down. According to what I heard from all the um, sports talk. Yeah. And they're friends and they calm them down. I guess that's why they brought him in so that, you know, if he feels lonely, he can talk to someone. Yeah. But um, so the Mets pitching is not doing so hot. The... Mets hitting is not not doing so hot. That's an understatement. The Mets, the Mets can't hit the side of a barn. And it's a shame because they were doing well. They were doing well. Would you say that it was luck? Or would you say that it was a little bit of both, luck and skill? It's a little bit of both. Because now, you know, you don't know where they're going. Do you think they have a chance of catch it up again well the deficit is only two and a half games so i would say yes because there's still another two months to go in the season that's if they don't lose any more games if if, if it and goes also, back and forth that's if they don't lose any more uh players they, they've got a ton of players on the injured list how many about if i had to guesstimate yes 15 damn And speaking of players being out, the Yankees themselves, they have so many players out because of COVID. Yeah. You know, that that little thing that nobody, some of the people don't believe that they shouldn't wear masks. And 
it's the funniest thing in the world. People are dying. They're getting it. People are dying of it. Mm -hmm. The non-maskers are dying. Yep. And they're still saying, we don't need it. Some are changing their tune, but some others are not changing their tune at all. And I'm going, that's ridiculous. So how do the the Yankees lose so many players to COVID? I'm not really sure, but all I know is uh, they're not necessarily protecting themselves well. Well, at least they're doing better than the WWE because at least they'll announce that the reason why they lost this person is because of COVID. Mm -hmm. WWE, they don't announce it that they lost the person because of COVID. They don't want people to know it's because of COVID. Mm. But they like Donald Trump as president because Linda McMahon was working in the administration at some point. But she had a good position for herself because she was in uh, business, I think. Right. And that's what she is anyway. It's not like uh, Ben Carson, who is a medical doctor, and he was dealing with housing. I don't know what one has to do with the other unless he had some experience with the housing. And the only experience he had was that he grew up in housing. That's about it. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I just don't understand it. But um, the Yankees, ever since they've gotten those two big bats in that pitcher, they, they've skyrocketed. Yeah. And they lost the guy to COVID, too. Yeah. The outfielder. Yeah. And they also lost another guy because of a sprained uh, left thumb, and that's Glaber Torres. He's out 10 to 20 days. And uh, they lost Lonzo to COVID. Mm -hmm. And he was doing well for them. Now, the thing is, does Luke Voigt come back and try to show that he's got still some pop left in him? Well, he came back yesterday, and uh, even though the, the numbers don't really show it, he's an important part of their lineup. Well, of course he is because he's a lefty batter, but he's the actually a righty that batter. Received were one year contracts, so their contract ends this year. Mm -hmm. So, what are the chances of them re-signing? That's the whole. That's the whole thing because the Mets gave up a very good prospect, yeah. and the Yankees also gave up. A very good prospect. Mm -hmm. So how do they do that and then go, okay, well, we're going to try to, even though one of them said, oh, I always wanted to be a Yankee. Yeah. And that's, I don't know, what do you think of all that? When when you sign someone for or, for one year or the end of the contract? Well, it depends on the situation because management might want that one-year contract, but the player himself might want more. Well, the, the, his contract ends this year, mm -hmm. and you gave up a, a good player. So how do you give up a top prospect like the Mets did and to get one player? But I think the other guy, the, the, more, the player that the Mets have, his contract doesn't end. I think he's got two years left. Yeah. And the Yankees, who received, who received two, three players, I think, are two of them. How, this is their last year. It could be, yeah. I don't get it. How do you make a move like that? Well, they they, they want to win. What do you think the chance? What do you think the the chances of them winning? Slim. I'll tell you right now. I, I mean, uh, the wild even, card. The wild card going is all the, the way. The wild card. They're only about two and a half games out, but the way the Yankees just have major <laughs> problems scoring runs, it, it, it doesn't. It doesn't look like to me that they're going to be. Uh, Getting any closer to that to that wild card? I mean, it's granted it's two and a half games, and yes, we're two months away. But there have been times when the Yankees have been really painful to watch at the plate. They keep on swinging at pitches out of the strike zone, and 
when they do have a chance, they'll either pop out or uh, hit a weak ground ball someplace. Yeah, and speaking of weak ground balls, you know, the rest of the league, some are doing fantastic, some is, some are just dropping, like the Boston Red Sox. Mm-hmm. And you've got others, like the Houston Astros, still up there. Yep, they lead their division. And, you know, the Seattle Mariners are going, doing well ever since they switched to the National League. Isn't that something? Mm-hmm. Ever since they switched to the National League, they've done well. Yeah. Now, how does that come about? Well, it's because they it's have the really good league, players. Isn't it? It's just that the pitcher hits. What's the difference? The difference is that they have really good players, some of whom... Uh, are still uh, on the team from their uh, last championship from 2017. Yeah, but it's funny because when the National League had the DH, some of those teams didn't do well. And I'm trying to figure out, wait a minute, you mean to tell me? Now, I know it's hard for a guy off the bench to keep hot and just hit. Mm -hmm. But they had, they had a problem trying to find a DH. Right. And I'm rolling, but all you have to do is hit the ball. Mm. You know? It's a it's a pain in the rear end because you have to wait on the bench and you're used to playing, but I get that part. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to tell me we had a difficult time trying to find the DH, that's a ridiculous statement to me. You know? Yeah. And the Dodgers picked up someone real good. I mean, the Dodgers are stacked. Yeah, they they wound up uh, making uh, a really big trade right at the deadline, uh, getting um, the pitcher, Max Scherzer. And, yeah, you know, he didn't want to come to the New York Yankees either. He didn't want to come to the Yankees or the Mets. He preferred to be on the West Coast. He must not want to play for the Eastern Division or doesn't want to come East because of the pressure. Well, he spent six years, six and a half years in the East Division pitching for the Nationals, and he won himself a championship. So I'm not really sure if uh, pressure. Okay, really then I'm wrong. I'm sorry, it. but I'm just trying to figure out if he don't want to play for the Yankees and Mets, there's got to be a re reason. Like I said, I think it's because the pressure here would be too too great. Even though Dodgers organization, that's a lot, but they're more casual over there. People leave at, at the seventh inning. I don't know if they still do that. Oh, they still do that. <laughs> ah. And the Padres are doing well, I think. And there's a lot of baseball team that did improve. You know, when they hit the draft, when they got into the draft, and the Cubs, I don't know. They have the money. And some guy said it perfect. You know, he said, you know how a guy says, oh, I really want to stay with the team. I really want to stay with the team. Mm -hmm. And then when you give them what you think is a good amount of money, they go, no, I don't want it, but I really wanted to stay with the team. But it wasn't enough money. If you want to stay with the team, you'll do, you'll bend over backwards to get enough money, but still, you know, you'll get a break. Like, what's his name with the Knicks? Mm -hmm. uh, what's that guy's name? Why do I always forget that, the forward's name? You talking about Julius Randle? Julius Randle. There's a guy, his contract ends next year. Yeah. And he signed up for four more years. Well. And he don't go he didn't go for the max. Which is a, a smart move on his part because it gives the Knicks a little bit more flexibility to try and bring in other players or cut a deal. Yeah, well, you know, 
let's talk about the Giants and Jets before we get to the Knicks and Nets. Yeah, speaking of whom, they're going to open the preseason against each other this coming Saturday night. Yeah, the Summer League. Preseason. Yeah, the um, the Knicks are playing in the Summer League uh, tomorrow. I forgot what time. I think at 8 p.m. Mm-hmm. And the Jets and the Giants. They lost a lot of people to COVID and to injury, too. Yeah. Help me out here. What's going on with them, and how are they doing? And they, both of them are saying they have breakout rookie stars coming out on for the linemen. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Well, the big story regarding the Giants, when's Saquon Barkley going to come back? I mean, I know that he finally got, it, got approved by the doctors to practice with the team. But there's the the issue of whether he's going to be able to play in the first preseason game or not. Another story involves Daniel Jones, the quarterback. I think it is time that we put a clock on Daniel Jones because he's been pretty erratic taking the snaps from center. And this year is uh, some are saying this is a make or break year for him. If he doesn't improve his play and he stinks, maybe, just maybe, the Giants may have to start over again from scratch and get themselves and the G- and they fire a rookie quarterback. The GM. What's that? And they fire the GM. And also fire the general manager as, as well, Dave Gettleman. Because he was the one, remember, when he said it. When Aaron Rodgers was out there, he's going, nope, this is our guy. We're going to stick with him because he's great. He's Mm -hmm. great for our team. He's not going anywhere. Yep. Now, mind you, again, he had no one to throw to. Yeah. And he did get hurt. Mm Mm-hmm. And he had no front line. Right. Now there's no excuse. So do you judge a guy by going, you didn't have a front line before. You didn't have nobody to throw to, but at least a good quarterback will find someone. Mm-hmm. Is, that, is that how you, you would judge a quarterback? By saying that scenario where, listen, we don't have really nobody, but a good, if you're a damn good quarterback, you'll find someone. Mm-hmm. You'll make it into a game, or you just say, you know, because we didn't have anybody good. He has nobody to throw, so it's not his fault. Right. So which, which scenario do you pick? I pick the scenario where the Giants give Daniel Jones the ball, let him do what he can for for 17 games. And if he doesn't get the job done, either look for another quarterback out in the free agent market or see if there's somebody in the draft that they can pick. No, yeah, because... But, he but could, right now... I'm sorry. I was about to say right now, the uh, market for college quarterbacks looks really, really bare. Well, they could have gone after Aaron Rodgers. They they could have. They could have, but it was more along the lines of Green Bay not wanting to trade him and giving him a a new contract more than anything else. And well, that's one other thing. But I'm just saying, if the scenario, I mean, how do you judge a quarterback? Do you judge a quarterback because he didn't have nobody to throw to, and because he got hurt? That's why he, he wasn't playing well. Or if he's a good quarterback, do you judge him on the fact that, well, he tried to find players and he succeeded, but still didn't do well? How do, is that how you judge him? Which one? By the two scenarios that I gave you. I would have to say it's the fact that he had nobody to throw to that uh, didn't really help matters. So that means now that – now. Two years have gone by because he had nobody to throw to. He had no linemen, and he got hurt. Now 
in his third year. Now it's his breakout year because now he has someone to throw to and he's got linemen. Mm-hmm. So if he doesn't perform, because now he has the weapons, if he doesn't perform this one year, that means he, he's out? It could be that way, yeah. The Giants now, are really desperate to have a good franchise quarterback at their disposal. But how do you judge a quarterback? That's what I'm trying to find out. Because You judge a you, quarterback based on his skill set, whether he has a strong arm whether he's athletic enough, whether he can uh, stay in the pocket for a long time and connect with a receiver. But I go with my first scenario. What's that? Which I go with my first scenario, which is, although you don't have very, your lineman stakes, and you don't really have nobody to throw to, Mm -hmm. but if you're a good quarterback, you find someone to throw to and make it reasonable. Yeah. He didn't even make it reasonable. I mean, it's not like the it's not like he didn't have anybody to throw to. I mean, he had Sterling Shepard. Well, that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to say is that that's why that's what made me go I don't want him next year. I mean, when they could have gotten someone else this year because of his past performances two years, but I also said that they always go by the number three. Mm-hmm. Nine out of ten times, they'll always say, wait the third year, wait the third year, wait the third year. And this is his third year. He's got to blossom. He's got to do something. Right. Now, they did, Giants did lose a couple of people to injury. Shaquan Barkley, you don't know if he's going to come back, even though for preseason, and he's working by, by himself. He's not working out with the team. Well, he's been cleared for practice. So I'm looking at, do you play him one game and then that's it? And then let him play the regular season games? Or do you play him a quarter piece and then that's it? That way he doesn't get hurt. Yeah, give him a, about a quarter. And then when the third game comes up uh, against New England, let him play at least two quarters, two or three quarters, or two and a half quarters, and let's see exactly what he does. Well, uh, speaking of Yankees before, DJ LeMay still out of leadoff spot. Um, a lot of things. And Glaber, Glaber Torres is on the injured list. He, sp- he sprained his thumb. Uh, Gio Schilla as injury setback. You know, and, um, but speaking about the Giants, they still should be good. How, now, they're saying that their front line is good this year because of the young players that they have. What do you think of them? I'd have to see them um, at least in one preseason game to find out whether they're good or not because I really can't go by hearsay. Okay, that that's per, that's that's um, but but by hearsay they they're saying that their practices are really good and by the newspapers and from what I've read they're saying these are the guys to look to read after and to look after because they're going to be breakout stars if they don't get hurt. And even the Jets' front line. Mm -hmm. The Jets had no front line. Not even. And they're boasting about their front line because they got good young players themselves. Mm -hmm. And what do you think of the Jets now? Well, they made themselves an upgraded quarterback with Zach Wilson. And from what I understand, uh, he's actually done well in practice. But the coach, Robert Sala is doing all he can to try and protect that kid. He does not want that kid to have a huge head all because of a couple of good practices. Oh, yeah. Who's the coach for that team? For the Jets? Yeah. Robert Sala. Oh, and the Giants? Joe Judge. Did you hear that the Giants were practicing and they got into a scuffle and Joe Judge made him run laps or something? Yeah, 
That's a sign of a guy who's not going to take any BS from any players. And I like when they go, well, he comes from this guy's coaching staff. And I'm going, no, that's just him. He may have picked a little something from him. Let's say he came from Bill Belichick. I love when they come from Bill Belichick's staff. Yeah. And they go, well, yeah, he must have a little bit of Bill Belichick in him. But they wind up losing. Name yeah. one coach that has been a Bill Belichick coming off of his staff that has won. Anybody from Joe from Bill Belichick staff. Bill Belichick staff? Yeah. His coaching staff. He goes, they always say, yeah, because every time I hear, oh, this guy from Bill Belichick's staff, yeah, he should be he he should be like him. Even the Jets had a guy from Bill Belichick's staff, and he did nothing. And maybe it's because the Jets have a jinx or something. I don't know. All I know is that anytime you hear like uh, Joe uh, Joe Judd, he came from what staff? Who was his head coach? He came from the Patriots staff, and he was Look there eight that. years. He was a, a special teams assistant. Then he became the special teams coordinator. Then he became the special teams coordinator and wide receivers coach. This Look, is interesting. The, I'm not saying he doesn't put in the work. I'm just saying that, oh, he must have learned from this guy. Yeah, what you do, you do. But they make him out. If you are a Bill Belichick, Check guy, uh, you you forget about it. You you start going crazy. Anyway, that being said, how do you think they're going to do preseason wise, knowing the hype that both teams have right now? That's and good, who are they playing? That's a good question because um, it seems like the Giants are still a work in progress. Hmm. So whether whether they make the playoffs or not is is kind of sort of a, a sidebar a little bit. But the preseason right now, knowing the hype is, as it is, and knowing who they're playing, do you think their hype is justified or, like you said, it's a work in progress? And yeah, it's definitely a work much. in progress. So don't don't believe the hype. Just no, so it definitely not. Okay, that, that's fair. That's a fair assessment, you know what? I think. Since we're on the subject of the Giants, we want to let you know that uh, in addition to the Jet game this coming Saturday, the Giants have Cleveland and New England to finish their preseason. And keep in mind, this is the first year of the 17-game schedule. So... Yeah, you know, like I said, they, they better try. They better melt these guys for more money because... That's an extra day of them getting hurt, and it's the only. Is it because of the wild card that they added, or it's just the game that they added? It's just the game that they added, and they were trying to get another wild card in there too. Yeah, speaking, and the union said no. Speaking of uh, wild cards, did you know that Major League Baseball is trying to add? Four more, two more teams to each league to uh, try and expand their playoff. They want a 14 team playoff. Oh, dear Lord. And so they can go into November baseball? Apparently. If all of them had domes, I can see that happen. But mm -hmm. not all of these teams have domes on them. Yeah. That's the only way that you can get it done. If you had a dome or a tarp over them or something, I don't know. People are greedy. But who, where do you think the best place to put a baseball team? The best place to put a baseball team? Right, because it doesn't seem like Miami or Florida gets any any nothing. I don't think when it comes to baseball. Well. It's funny that they you ask that. Las Vegas. It's funny that you ask that because uh, 
there are rumors going around that if this team does not get funding for a new stadium, they might be going to Las Vegas. Which team? The Oakland A's. The Oakland Athletics is going to move to Las Vegas. That would be a shame. Yeah, it would, because Oakland's got some really, some really, really passionate fans. I mean, the stadium is empty a lot. They only draw about fifteen to 20,000. But... Then make a smaller ballpark. <laughs> That's the thing. They, the city may not want to do the funding for a ballpark. I mean, they had a... They kind of sort of had plans for a ballpark that's near the waterfront, but the city may not want to fork over the money to to do the stadium. Oh, man. It's all about the Benjamins. It has nothing to do with, it has nothing to do with trans. It just has to do with the Benjamins. Yeah. You know. It's not that money is the root of all evil. It's people that are the root of all evil. Not money. It's people. Mm-hmm. And they keep on saying that as, as if that comes out of the Bible. That doesn't come out of the Bible. You know, and it's like God helps who helps himself. That's not from the Bible. <laughs> yeah. That's just the saying, but that's, you know. That's just the same, but these guys, money is not the it's people that make money the root of all evil. Yeah. It's people. It's it's not money. It's people. But it's just funny because you have the athletics, let's say they go to to Las Vegas. Then you'll have another team, let's say like the Marlins who doesn't who can't catch a cold, go to the athletics and they become the new athletics. <laughs> I think it's ridiculous either way. But um, I think, you know, the teams that have, I mean, I feel bad for the Montreal Expos because they really had some damn good teams. Yeah, they did. And they're done. You don't hear their background anymore. They don't even exist to people. No. And and that's a damn shame. Man, that's a damn shame. But, um Speaking of that, so the Jets, on the Jets side. Right. This kid, and they also signed a veteran quarterback, too. Did they? Yeah, they actually did. They signed a veteran quarterback. I think his name Johnny Walker. Not not the liquor. But, um, you know, that that's... Do do they have the Nick curse where they can't really get a big name? A big I don't know player. if it's a, I don't know if it's a curse, but I just think it's it's the stigma that uh that the Jets have of being an also rant. Because I tell you, it between the Giants have, have have a big name player in Shaquan Barkley, right? Mm-hmm. They had Phil Sims. They've had a lot of other damn good ball players that have become big players. The Jets, on the other hand, except for the the the, the sack exchange, nobody that's an elite ball player comes to the Jets. Who was the last elite player that has that played for the Jets? The last elite player? Yeah. There have been a few. Who? Curtis Martin. Brett Favre, even though he was close to the twilight of his career. Yeah, exactly. That's my whole point. He was in his downside. He wasn't in his upside. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't even include him because... He was in his downside. But probably but the, I'm sorry. But probably the, the last player that, that you could consider a franchise player who decided to go to the Jets of their own free will has to be Curtis Martin. 
And I think he's in the Hall of Fame now. Yeah, but like I said, for some reason, nobody wants to come to New York. Well, can you blame them? I mean, there's a lot of pressure here from fans and media. And it's there's also stuff that has nothing to do with sports either. It's trying to find the it's trying to find a place to settle down with the family. It's trying to uh, look for whatever activities uh, to, to as much. Wait a minute, as many activities as New York has, and as many places not because of COVID. You mean to tell me there's no place to? No, I'm not going to believe that. You either want to be here or you either don't. The same way you you keep on hearing that LeBron wanted to play for the Knicks, but his wife didn't. That's I'll what made him play that. for the Lakers. Or as Steve Summers like to say, the fakers. Yeah. <laughs> but I tell you, you know, what do you think of the Jets right now? They're slightly better. I mean, they made the upgraded quarterback. They, they got a coach that just uh, oozes energy and enthusiasm. Uh, I think their defense has gotten slightly better. But the, but the main issue is who's going to be the franchise running back? Who's going to be the number one receiver? Is that offensive line going to be able to protect Wilson? Those are some questions that need to be asked. Well, they did have one, but they gave him, they they got rid of him because the coach didn't like him. Mhm. And now that the coach is gone, I think this coach would have enjoyed him. But it's just too funny. Well, yeah. I'm like I said, I'm glad that he he didn't come back because he he really didn't do well. Mm-hmm. But um you know, and Tim Tebow, the Tebow's back. Yeah, he's back as a tight end, playing yeah. for the Jaguars. He's going to be a tight end, all right. <sighs> yes, he did make it as a, a quarterback, went to play baseball. He may have had a shot there, and I'm going, they kept on saying that he was a pretty good hitter, that he was going to come up in the majors. Is that in so? In the Mets organization. Somehow something happened, and I think he got hurt. And I'm going, why didn't this guy, who's the quarterback, try out for a pitcher? Mm -hmm. Because you would figure, as a football player, you have a gun for an arm. Right? Mm -hmm. But they said he was a good outfielder and a good hitter. He was about to come up with something, but I think he got hurt. Now he wants to go back to being in New York, uh, playing football. He must be a pretty good athlete. Oh, he's a terrific athlete. He just can't find any place where to go. Because when he played with the Jets and they said, no, you're not playing quarterback no more. And he was trying to play what? Tight end too? Yeah. How well did he do with them? How well did he do with who? With the Jets when he was playing tight end. He barely got any playing time. And he was now a quarterback. And he was a quarterback then. Now that he's with his favorite coach, how do you think he's going to do? You mean Tebow was a tight end? Yeah. I mean, he could do okay. I mean, uh, he, he's got the—he's definitely got the height and the body type for uh, for a tight end. That's for sure. And do you think they'll try trick plays with him? Don't be surprised if they do. And if they do, and he connects, and the guy gets hurt, the quarterback gets hurt. You think T. will step in as quarterback? No. I do. T. can't I do. throw, if man. He starts connecting with passes here and there. And the guy gets hurt, don't be too surprised. Do not be surprised. Hey, but congratulations to the Olympic team. You mean you mean team the USA? Basketball team. Oh yes. The men and the women both got their gold medals. Yes. 
Yes, I wonder if Donald Trump said anything about them. No, it was only about the women's soccer team that he talked about. But yes, yes, they won. We are superior. I mean, when I saw that first game against France, I'm going, what is this nonsense? And France was playing a hell of a game. Yeah. And they were playing big guys on the on the um on the Olympic team. Yeah. And the Olympic team couldn't defend the big guys. Well, they had two two or three big guys on the team and they played them at the same time and they couldn't do a damn thing. All of a sudden somebody must have lit a fire and to um Kevin Durant and boom. Oh, Kevin Durant showed that he's one of the two best players in the game right now, him and LeBron. And also, he also signed an extension with the the, the, Jet and the Nets. Yep. Now, now four year, does that, agreed to a four-year contract extension. Now, does that mean that Kyrie Irving signs with them and James Harden and whoever else, Blake Griffin, signs with them? Well, Blake Griffin got a one-year contract, so the answer to that is yes. Okay. As, as far as Kyrie Irving and um, James Harden and James Harden, Harden, if I'm not mistaken, has another three years left on his deal. Irving has two more years left. So I want to say yes, but they probably the Nets uh, front office, I say, probably wants to milk this whole thing until it gets to the end. And and good players are still one. You see. And here's what I've said all along. If you have a good player, a LeBron, KD, people want to play for that team. Yeah. Because they want to play with him. Patty Mills did, and he signed a contract with them. Exactly. Just like the Lakers. Yep. They want to play with LeBron. Mm -hmm. So they'll even take a pay cut because they know that that team has a really good chance of winning the championship. Now, before it used to be one or two guys, and then you had the team behind you to win a championship, which, which made it sweeter, because according, according to Giannis, he said, why do I want to go to a super team? This makes, me, this makes it sweeter because this is the team that I had to do with. Do you know how refreshing that is for that young man to say so? It is he, refreshing, but nowadays it's all about the rings and the Benjamins. I know. But, and I'm I, and I'm one of those people that listen, if you haven't won in about 4 years, get out of there. If 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 you haven't won in 3 years, and you're still a young guy, or you're getting up there in age, go to a super team. Try to hook up with a, with a team that has really damn good ball players. because although your franchise is trying to build around you, but it's not working. So it's time for you to leave. Mm -hmm. Now, Luka Dantovic, which the Mavericks are trying to sign, he was another one that wants to play for the New York Knicks. Well... Not anymore. He got himself a nice, juicy contract extension with the Mavs. And that's another thing that I can't stand. They always want to play for the New York Knicks, but they never come. I wonder. I wonder. Now, think of it this way. Do you think, out of all the players that are going to leave next year, do you think the Knicks will sign a big name? Like, let's say, Zion Williams. Even though he still hasn't proven himself to be any good. Healthy? He's got to stay healthy. But I'm just saying, do you think he will sign with the Knicks to play with R.J. Barrett? I mean, I could see a reunion with him and, and, uh, and Barrett, the two Duke players. But other than that, Who's out there that would actually consider New York home? 
Now, do you think again? Let, let's let's put the scenario up there. Let's say the Knicks go to the playoffs again, and they go to the second round and they lose. Right. Does that make the team more noticeable to people that say, oh, look, they're coming close to winning the championship. Let me go to that team. Possibly. Quite possibly. And I'm going in my head, no. No, Unless you get the big name in a trade, because Kimba Walker, yes, he's good, but is he the savior? No, no, not even close. And people, he's got to get his knees healthy this first. Guy with open arms, which is fine, because he's a nice guy, and everything else. He's he's a you know like Ben Simmons. He's had three All Stars. He's done everything right. It's just the fact that he's hurt. And I'm going back to are the Knicks going going backwards and giving give us our old, your weak, and you give us your old, your meek, and your weary. Yeah. Because okay, more like give us them. your old, your bloated contracts and your and your poor health. And, and which which they haven't done yet. Which they haven't done. They haven't gotten a blown a big contract, which is good. Because the old Knicks would have done something wrong, or James Dolan would have stuck his nose in there somewhere. But I'm hearing on on a trade alone, let's get rid of RJ Barrett. Let's get rid of Mitch Robertson. On trade. And I'm going, this is unbelievable. And I and I called one of these radio stations and it was the funniest thing. I asked them, does anybody want to come to New York? Consider well, my question what what I wanted to ask, does anybody want to come to New York, even though James Dolan is the GM and I mean the, the owner and he's done so much wrong to the Knicks. Mm-hmm. And but that was the question that I wanted to ask. But I came out with because Damon Lillard. The question that I had for this gentleman was, how much do you give up for for uh, Lillard? Because you don't want to do the Carmelo Anthony, considering Donnie Walsh was the GM, and he didn't want Carmelo Anthony because he was giving up too many players. But Donnie Walsh was the gentleman that that wanted Carmelo Anthony. Do you know what this guy did to me? What did he, he do? He hung up on me afterwards because there was little time. And he acted as if I was a disgruntled Knicks fan. And he he's on Fridays in the night uh, up to 12 o'clock. And I'm going... You don't know what you're talking about. How am I a disgruntled Knicks fan if I just laid out for you that James Dolan was the one that the one that wanted Carmelo Anthony, and you traded half the team for them? Now, not that they were all stars, all of them, but I'm saying you bypass Donnie Walsh, and then he started talking about Amari Stoudemire. Oh, when Amari Stoudemire came in, you know he had bad knees to begin with. Mm-hmm. So where is this kid coming from that he said, well, you know, it wasn't a bad deal because Carmelo Anthony is a great player. Yes, but nobody wanted to play with Carmelo Anthony. He wasn't in pulling in people. And Omari Stoney may have had bad knees, but the guy never answered my question. How many players do you give up for, for Damon Lewis? He never answered that. I can answer that question for you. At least two plus a couple of draft picks. Three players tops. Who do you give up? Let's see. Lillard's the point guard. 
Uh, Emmanuel Quickly, maybe. R.J. Barrett, maybe. Um, Mitchell Robinson. Maybe Mitchell Robinson. So, would you give up Mitchell Robinson, R.J. Barrett, and let's say Kevin Knox or Obi Thompson? Because they, I heard that they they were high on Kevin Knox and Obi Thompson. Interesting. Would you give up one of them? I would much rather give up Kevin Knox. And two draft choices? I would definitely give up Kevin Knox because Kevin Knox really hasn't proven anything since he's been here. Again, he's only 21 years old and he hasn't been given a real chance, but I'm just saying he has to. And remember, the coaches at the time have been a revolving door. And I'm afraid Mm. of Tom Tribador. Although he's a good coach, will he be there in the next two years or three? I don't know. Because eventually, he doesn't like playing young guys. Yeah, he prefers veterans. Exactly. And he's trying to make them go, go after this veteran, go after that veteran. And I'm going, no. We have all these young, productive young guys, and now you want to turn them into older gentlemen? No. That's not a way to build a team. Exactly. But in his head, I don't know, because he's had that track record. So that's why I'm afraid for Tom Tripp. And God forbid if I call one of these radio stations and I say that. Oh, but he was coach of the year, and he had... No. Doesn't matter. He is coach of the year. He is a damn good coach. But he's more of a player that likes veteran players. Yeah. Tops. So, again, you would give up R.J. Barrett, Mitchell Robinson, Kevin Knox to get. You give up two productive stars, two or three productive stars, plus, let's say, three draft choices to get one, probably one guy and someone else that they'll throw in. Mm-hmm. And the guy's 31 years old, which he's still on top of his game. Yeah. And then I'm thinking in my head, the reason why they got Kimba Walker and Fournier to use them as trade bait. No, I don't think so. I'm thinking in my head that they had, to, because I can't believe that you're going to say, okay, I'm going to put Damon Lillard and... Kimball Walker together because I'm going to get rid of R.J. Barrett, who has been productive for you, and Mitchell Robertson, although he's been hurt, but he's been productive for you. Hmm. That's insane. Yeah. I know in order for you to get a good player, you got to give a good player. But damn. R.J. Barrett, who you've been hooping and hoppling about. And if you keep him, you may be able to get Zion Williams. You mean Zion Williamson. Yeah, excuse me. Zion Williamson, so you'd rather trade him. I don't get it. But you'll hear half the people go, yeah, he's great. Damon Lillard, that's what we need. That'll put us over. Think about it. If you get rid of Mitchell Robertson, R.J. Barrett, and let's say Kevin Knox, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have Noles Noel at center, Tasha Gibson at center, and let's say that kid Gerard Simmons, who's, who's doing great right now, even though it's his first game, first summer league play. And he did very well. The hype is on him and everything. Emmanuel Kugli, they tried to point guard, and already they go, oh, that, that's a bad uh, thing. But it was his first game playing point guard there. It's his first summer league game. I don't understand some of these riders. It's, it's the first time he's played, and they're riding as if, oh, well, this is discard this now. He can't play that position. Wait until the summer league is over. Wait until the 
basketball season start, give them a couple of games, and then you decide then. You know what? Maybe I should uh, retract my answer about who to give up for Damian Lillard because I just saw the box score for the Pacer game, which the Knicks won by eight points. Emmanuel quickly had 32 points. Granted, this is only a summer league game. But and quickly, only rookies are playing, no veterans. But Granted, this is only a, a, a summer league game, but Emmanuel quickly showed why the Knicks uh, drafted him last summer. Now, if they want to get rid of Emmanuel quickly, okay, I could see that because he's a little bit undersized. But yeah. Getting so rid of R.J. Barrett, getting rid of Mitchell Robertson, getting rid of Obi Torben, okay? You know, I I don't get it. I know you have, like I said, I know you have to give up a guy, good guys, to get a good guy. I get it. But if you build around, this is supposed to be your core players. You would rather give up your core players to get another player. Now, again, then you would have Kimball Walker, Damon Lillard, Noah Lowell at center. Let's say Obi Tobin. Oh, what's that guy's name that I keep forgetting? The, the forward that just signed. You mean Julius Randle? Julius Randle. I don't know why I forget his name. Julius Randle, Noah Noel. Girls got Noel got a new deal too, and, and Gerard Simmons. He's supposed to be he's supposed to be a forward, but they may use him at center too. I, I just don't get it. What team do you have that you could say, yeah, they they'll they would be better off with Damon Lillard if they get rid of the players that I just mentioned? Hmm. Would they be a better team? Because remember, that's who you have. They'd be better at point guard, that's for sure. Yeah, but I'm talking about team-wise. You get rid of R.J. Barrett, Mitchell Robinson, let's say Kevin Knox, and whoever else. Hmm. Do you think with the players that they would have left over, do you think that they would have, they would be better off? Better off with Damian Lillard, you mean? Would the team be a better? Would the team be a better team? Oh, they'd be a much better team because they f- they would finally have a dominant superstar who could uh, open up the, the open up the middle. Right, but isn't R.J. Barrett an up and coming superstar? Oh, I isn't don't know Mitchell about Robinson that. an up and coming superstar? I doubt it. But these are the team that you built around. Remember, this is what I'm getting at. You, you keep on saying that this is the core. Mm-hmm. And now that Tribidor is there, he wants older players. And, you know, they keep on saying, trust the office, trust the office, trust the office. I'm starting to get scared of the office. Yeah. By the way, we got 51 seconds left. Uh, any last words? All I have to say is watch the games, and we'll talk about it next week. Yes, sir. Thanks to everyone for watching uh, uh, at home. Thanks to Kenny Graham on the other side of the glass as well. And please leave us messages to see how we do. Yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. If, if, if you, you wanna, have any questions that you want us to answer, let us know. That's a good idea. So for everyone here, I'm Jamie. I'm Hector. We will see you next Monday night. Good night, everyone. Same same bad time, same bad channel.